Well, I was so excited to welcome Liz to the Core Connections podcast today. So Liz, I would love for you to get started. Let's just share with everyone how you got started with your whole brand, Motherhood Unstressed. And I know you have a podcast and you have products. Um, yeah, can you just share with everyone how that came about? Yeah, so it was one of those kind of slow winding origin stories, um, but really kind of comes back to uh, when I became a mom and I really struggled with trying to feel happy, trying to feel balanced, trying to have a sense of who I was as a person after this human was born. And I struggled with that for a long time. And it wasn't until I started to kind of peel back the layers, do the internal work, kind of face, you know, my shadow side that I kind of figured out what worked for me and what was going to pull me out. Um, and then I only started writing about that process years later uh, when I was at work one afternoon. And that cathartic experience kind of turned into a blog, which I thought my mother would read. And that was it. <laughs> and then, um, you know, the blog turned into published articles and then the podcast and along the way, um, a supplement line as well. So it kind of, it wasn't like, I set out knowing this is this is what I want to do, but I always kind of knew who I wanted to serve. And that was other mothers. That was other women who had been through what I'd been through, who were going through what I was going through in real time and who I could see needed a little maybe inspiration or needed, you know, just someone who understood what they were dealing with and said, Hey, like, here's what works for me. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't. But by you hearing my story, you know, you might be uplifted. And that to me was everything. And so it was kind of just following along that mission. Ultimately, every day I would wake up and be like, okay, how can I serve her today? And that's what I would do. And it's been three years and, you know, a wild ride ever since, but I just, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love it. Well, I love everything that you do. I love the whole title, Motherhood Unstressed. I always feel like, I mean, in my world as a mom of three myself personally and everything that I'm always preaching, so much of it comes back to stress. We mm -hmm. add too much stress in our life. We let things affect us. So let's, let's start, start, off, start off with a big stressor for so many moms. We take things too much we put guilt upon ourselves for things that honestly like sometimes we're just doing the best that we can so what do you have to say to all of those moms out there even those of us you and I who have done a lot of work I'm sure there's still little moments here and there right so what what is your advice to all of, all of us yeah it's yeah, such a hard such a hard thing, thing because when you when you're a type a person especially when you're a mother and i don't know if you can be a mother and not be slightly type a you know you have to control everything and make sure everything's running you're hard on yourself because you maybe you compare or maybe you you've been better other days and you're like why can't i be you know at that level today and it's just not going to happen so i think just understanding that first and foremost that you are human and that you even by having the guilt alone, like that shows that you care, that you are a good mother, a good person, and just giving yourself that grace to relax your shoulders and to, you know, look in the mirror and say, you know, you're doing a good job. It's okay. Like he's up on yourself because at the end of the day, you know, no one is going to say you need to do this. You need to do like, no one's going to know. It's really us who are keeping this, these tallies, these lists, and it's like, okay, that's great. But sometimes, you know, you need to deviate and you need to take the time to nurture yourself, to give yourself a break and know that your kids are going to be okay if you do that. And really they're going to benefit so much more if you can give yourself that gift. So you mentioned something that comes up all the time and it is like the number one excuse that I hear from women as to why they're not doing those self-care things in life is like, I don't have enough time. Yeah. I don't have enough time. So what are your thoughts? What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, I kind of challenged them in that moment. I'm like, well, how much time did you spend on Facebook? How much time did you spend on Instagram looking at the political vitriol that we're dealing with today? I can speak personally. It's too much time. So, you know, just to, to realize that like, where we actually are spending our, our seconds, our minutes, our hours, you know, the highest performing CEOs really 
every single minute is filled with something. You know, it's filled with a meeting or it's filled with reading a book at lunch or it's filled with a workout. Like they don't play with their time. Their time is the most valuable thing in the world to them and they make use of it. And so I would say to that mother that says, I just don't have enough time. I say, no, that can't be true. Because if the most powerful CEOs in the world who are working, you know, each and every day, which we are, we are the CEOs of our family, we are busy. But when you really get intentional with how you want to be and how you want to live your life, I guarantee you, you will find five to 10 to 15 to 20 minutes for you, you know, put your phone aside, put, put, you know, the needs of others aside for 20 minutes or whatever, three minutes. Uh, and you'll find that time. And then once you find it and you start to feel the benefits of taking care of yourself, you know, meditating or going for a walk around your block, reading a book, reading a journal, reading something inspirational, you know, that's not comparing yourself to others on Instagram, you're going to feel it and you're going to want to do it again and again and expand it even more. Those are such great words of advice that I feel like it said so often. So when it comes to this topic of self-care, and you mentioned a lot of things, I know that for so many women, again, there's still this, it's like, I don't have time, or I don't have time to do 30 minutes, or I don't have time to stand and do a 30 minute meditation or whatever it is. But it's like, you and I both know, it doesn't have to be a lot, a little bit yeah. can really go a long way. But how do we start like, you know, breaking down that wall, that barrier that's standing there for moms when they're like, I want to do it, but it's hard to break those habits, right? No, I love that you said that, that word habit, because that's really what it is. And that's also the key to doing what you want to do and getting to that point where you feel like you actually are taking up enough time for yourself. And the key to doing that is to add these little self-care moments, these three minutes of meditation, these five minutes of squats while, you know, while you're already doing other things that you would normally be doing in your routine. So making coffee in the morning while your coffee is brewing, sit in a chair and focus on your breathing for the amount of time that that takes. Or, you know, during a commercial break, like get on the ground and do some crunches, like add it in, in kind of a sly, slick way to the stuff that you're already doing, because we already know our routines are pretty hard set. You know, you get into your thirties and forties, you kind of have your day planned out. So if you want to improve, you don't want to upheaval and, and cause a big upheaval with everything that you're doing. The smarter way is to just kind of slide it in to the things that you're already doing. So like I said, the coffee, or if you get up and you're brushing your teeth, like think of three things that you're grateful for in that moment that you're brushing your teeth and then do that every single day. Cause we all know you're going to brush your teeth every day. So you might as well add in these positive little micro habits, I would call them. So that, you know, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you up leveled yourself and you haven't really had to do too much to do it. Like as busy moms, I think that's, that's kind of what we have to do. You know, we don't have a lot of other options, you know, if, unless you have a nanny and au pair or whatever, like you have to, you kind of have to take the reins and do this for yourself and you have to do it in a really economical and smart way. I love that advice. And one thing I've noticed as I have gotten better at this, and it's always a work in progress, is that I actually feel like I have a little bit more time because you're, you're in alignment with your priorities in your life. And it is a pri it should be a priority for every single mom out there to take care of herself, but it's gonna, it can look different for every single one of us because one of us might need a little bit more time to do certain things or we've gradually built up to it which is where I want to tie in and talk about meditation because meditation is something I personally have had struggled with in the past. I have finally built myself a better meditation practice, but it also involves me being very graceful around it where I don't have it, you know, set in a box. And if one day it doesn't happen, like it's okay. I was also telling a friend yesterday that even in the morning, if I like make my coffee and it's quiet and I just have like five minutes of like just quiet to gather my thoughts, like to me, that can be considered a meditative practice, right? Yes. So I yes. would love to hear, I know you teach meditation. I love your meditations that you have on your podcast. So I love that you do that. So thank you. No, thank you. 
things. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's so spot on, you know, it doesn't have to look like what you would see uh, in a Buddhist monastery, you know, just because you're not doing it perfectly with what they're doing, that doesn't make it any less effective. I mean, really what you're doing is calming down your parasympathetic nervous system. You're telling your body you're safe. It's okay. You know, I'm, I'm focusing now on, on how, what's even going on internally. Like, how are you feeling? What's going on? And that can be through just kind of getting quiet and just getting centered, you know, while your coffee's going, or, you know, maybe going through, you know, with a walk through nature. I mean, that counts just as much as long as you can get your brain into a different state where you're not go, 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 but you're also not asleep. Like that's, that's restorative. That's what we want. That's what improves the prefrontal cortex in our brains. That's what makes us better decision makers and makes us less reactive when stress does crop up because we all know stress is going to come to us every single day. So doing these little things like that, finding a meditative practice that actually works for us, that's the key, you know, and if you can find that and you can latch onto it, you're going to be so much more resilient to the waves that are going to come at you throughout life. And really, to me, that's what life is all about. You know, it's not like you're going to get the trophy at some random year, some random month, because you're just perfect. That never is going to happen. The, the progress, the, the fighting, the struggle, the learning, that to me is everything in life. And you do that each and every day by getting through your day, doing the best that you can, and having these, these little practices in place so that you are strong enough and able enough to fight and to, to live the life that you want to live. And you said something there where you talked about reacting, right? Like getting yourself out of more of that reactive state, which I love because that was something I didn't learn until, I don't know, a couple of years ago to really like hone in on that. And when you can do that, it, dramatically pulls you out of that fight or flight, right? So do you have any, can you speak to that a little bit more, a little bit deeper for our moms to understand just a little bit more like the power of not only pulling yourself out of that fight or flight on a regular basis, but how can we start being more aware of when we're in a reactive state versus just responding? Like, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's the beautiful thing about, meditation about just slowing down and starting to just watch the thoughts that you have. Like when you're in a calm state, when you're in a calm state and you can kind of just observe the way your mind works and what, what's at the forefront, what's kind of in the background, you know, what's a common theme, what are some things that you constantly think about and just watch that while you're calm. That's great. So when a situation comes up, your husband says something, the kids spill something, you know, you get a rude email, whatever, you can immediately, you have this greater sense of self-awareness already from all of the work that you did before. And so when your heart starts beating or your breaths become really shallow or you feel that, that sensation in your belly, instead of being like, I need to handle this, I need to deal with this now, Instead, you can kind of just come back to that observer, that watcher mentality. And you're like, huh, okay, I'm feeling this. I can't really breathe. Okay, I'm noticing that. You know, and it's almost like you have to talk to yourself and you sound like a crazy person. But to me, it's, it's, it's kind of like I'm curious about it at this point, you know, and, and that curiosity is really what sets you apart from like 99% of the, the population who instead they don't even realize, you know, what's going on. They're just in the moment. They're, they're full on, you know, fighting to, to figure out what's going on and, and to handle it. But if you can get curious for like, I'm talking about milliseconds here and step back and then decide what you want to do. And maybe you'll still do <laughs> what you would have done if you were angry, but at least you have that little bit of space to make a better decision to not say something that's going to hurt your child, to not say something that's going to drive you and your spouse further apart. You know, we're in a pandemic, we're with each other 24 seven. It ain't easy. So I think it comes down to kindness, you know, kindness to yourself and kindness to everyone in your life who you love. And it just takes a millisecond. And if you, we can all do that, right? Like it, it is possible 
So why wouldn't we try? You know, it would make life for ourselves so much better and so much more peaceful. And uh, if I can teach my children that too, that's everything. Like you win. That's really where you win. Oh, absolutely. And I love that you said, it's just so many great things there, but um, giving yourself a little more space. And, and it's just like that, like you're saying, it's like recognizing where in a past situation, you would have really had a strong reaction where you, you, in time, it will become less and less, but you have to be aware of it. You have to be aware of it. Yeah. And your kids, yes. Like this is the stuff, like I wish I would have known all of this when my kids were little, little, and really started implementing it even sooner because it is absolutely amazing that when you shift how you feel, because just think of how we all feel, when you get in that kind of reactionary state, you don't, it doesn't make you feel good. Yeah, We're all right. energy beings. And you're, if your children are near you or you have a baby on you, right? They all sense that. I have always said, I always just was so amazed with my, my oldest when she was a baby. And if I was just having an off day, she was always having a mm-hmm. harder day, right? Because they're with you and that energy. And I don't know, it's just so fascinating to me that, this is where when we come back to the conversation of self-care, like for your perspective and my perspective, we see it at such a deeper level than just the self-care act itself because of the trickle effect it has on our, well, overall health. Right. Yeah. And this isn't a theory. This isn't woo woo. This isn't like, you know, a fun catchphrase. Like this is real and You must, and I know it's another thing add to the list, but you must take the time to take care of yourself so that you actually are in a position to be a guiding light, to be a leader for your children. Like I think at the end of the day, as mothers, that's really our jobs. We are the CEOs of this family, of this corporation. And so we want to be, we want to be a positive leader for them because we've all had bad bosses and what does that do to the ecosystem of the office you know it's 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 rot and so if we can be in a position to not let that happen to rise above to elevate our vibration to such a level where everyone in the family is operating from a place of positivity and you know close to enlightenment as possible (laughs) then that's, that's what you want. And then that's going to affect how they do in school. That's going to affect how they relate to others, you know, as the older that they get, the relationships that they have. I mean, it really is such a simple thing, but it all starts at home. And it's really the onus is on us as the mother to, to make that happen. And I know that's a lot. I know already everyone listening to this is like, I already have so much on my plate, but I mean, if you remember anything from this talk, I think it's because you know, we do this because you're worth it and your, and your kids are worth it, right? We all want to do the best that we can do for our families. Okay. So Liz, you said something though, and I want to just talk about this for a minute. You mentioned that it's hard. Well, it's hard in the beginning because of the habits that you're shifting. Yes. But in all honesty, now where you're at, is it hard? No, because I feel like if I don't do it, I, I'm betraying myself and that's not acceptable. You know, it's like, if I don't get a workout in, if I don't do some form of meditation, I'm, I'm not, I'm not my, even myself. I don't know who I am, you know? So it's like, I'm, it's more familiar to me to take care of myself, to nurture myself. And you're right. Like it's taken years to get to that point. And when I don't do it, I feel really yucky and intense and not well. So, I mean, it's never easy, but at the same time, I'd much rather do it than not like to not do it is is a rare thing it's a weird off thing yeah because it be, because it becomes a part of well you and your life and so your identity yeah yeah and it's baby steps because i'm sure if you look at where you're at today even from a year ago that there have been gradual changes versus you know for everyone listening it's not like you have to just feel like you got to do a 180 I don't recommend that and I'm sure Liz doesn't recommend that either but it's like finding like one thing that you can slowly bring more awareness to I'm always talking about awareness I love that you talk you know you you talk about awareness too because that's where we have to start is to be aware of how we're even responding to life and what's going on within ourselves and around us so that then we can make little changes and believe it or not I mean, I think things start to shift quite quickly when you do start to be more aware. 
Yeah. And that's, that's the most beautiful thing is because, you know, you think it's going to take you years. You think it's going to take all these retreats and internal work and really like it's these little tiny moments, these little tiny moments of space that you give yourself that swings a really wide door. You know, that saying a small hinge swings a wide door. It's true. And I think, you know, you'll be amazed at how different you start to look at the world. You know, it's like people who come back from vacations kind of have that already, you know, inside of them. Like, oh, I'm thinking about my career differently. I'm thinking about my relationships differently. Like, I just feel different. And then they get back into work and they're like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> they go back to themselves. But when you do these little things each and every day, you know, meditating during the coffee brewing. And I keep coming back to that because I think everyone can relate to that. Everyone can do that. You know, everyone has something in the morning, something comforting in the morning that they can do this. And it's just like a couple of weeks, three weeks, four weeks go by and you're just kind of, you're different. You know, you're more in touch probably with who you really are. You know, the child inside of you, that's, that's, really the essence of your soul, you're more there than you've probably been in a long time. And that to me is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Absolutely. I love it. I want to ask you a couple of questions around your supplement line because it revolves around CBD and we get, I get so many questions about CBD and I'm not a CBD expert, (laughs) Um, but I do, I do know a lot about it and I do think that it is very beneficial. So could you speak to, well, one, how did you come to think like, this is what I want to, to create for moms? Like why can moms benefit from adding CBD into their life? Well, it was almost like this natural alignment. I mean, you know, the name is motherhood unstressed. So that (laughs) automatically you're like, yes, this is something that would definitely fit in with the branding. Uh, It works well together. Oh, and actually it's really, really good for you. Um, I was a little hesitant to do a, you know, a cannabis line just because at the time in 2018, it was still kind of new. We didn't know, you know, where the federal regulations were going to go with it. You know, luckily everything has you know, gone this way. And and obviously, if you've been watching the news, things are opening up even more. So um, CBD is is like aspirin now. But um, I just I when I first started taking it, um, I was amazed because again, I had been doing all of the work, all of the exercising, my my body was healthy and strong to where I was already producing enough cannabinoids to where I should have been, you know, relatively even keel. But when I started adding in CBD to my diet, it was like, it was like this extra level of clarity, this extra level of like diminished anxiety. And I started to realize like, wow, you know, even as on the ball as I had been, I was still processing and and like embodying a lot of anxiety in my life. And I was like, wow, well, this is cool. This is something that can help me with that. And then I thought, you know, so many other mothers are struggling with this, you know, and if they don't have the time to go for a 30 minute run, they have a time to take, you know, a couple capsules or some oil, you know, and help them feel, you know, that groundedness, that calm that we all want, that we all crave. So for me, it was a natural progression. I'm I'm so excited about the line. I'm so excited where we are now than when we even first started the quality that we're, that we're coming out with now, the transparency that we're coming out with now, you know, each bottle has a QR code, so you can actually trace it back to the farm. So to me, that's huge. Yeah, because I mean, the thing you probably already know this, but the thing with hemp is because it pulls heavy metals and toxins out of the soil. I mean, they actually used it for the Chernobyl spill, you know, and they use it for oil spill because it's such a great cleaner, but you don't want to reduce that down and then ingest it. That can be really dangerous. So you want to make sure that you're buying from a really clean source, a source that's showing you exactly what's in it. So you're actually buying CBD and what's not in it, you know, metals, toxins, things like that. So it's been really fun. And uh, the conversations with other moms, when they first find out like, oh, you have a CBD line. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) That's always interesting too. But I mean, I'm, you know, I'm a full believer in it and it works for me and it's worked for so many of my customers. So I'm, I'm happy to 
to stand out there, you know, on the, on the sidelines and, and put this out there into the world. Well, I, I mean, I'm a, I back it. I think it's great. I think that CBD is something that we still don't, we, it's from nature. And there is that, that whole saying of like, you know, we have what we need in nature and, you know, I've read a little bit. I think there's still more that needs to be done. And there's so much more that we can do with it. But anxiety is just something that you hear left and right that so many people are dealing with anxiety. I dealt with it when I had my mold stuff a couple of years ago because I had mm-hmm. a toxin load in my body. And so then, you know, that exacerbated everything. Um, and thankfully I've been able to move past all of that. And I think that's a big thing too, for women to understand that like what yes. you are dealing with right now, there are so many things nowadays that we can do. And, um, and I have recommended CBD to clients and I, it's worked wonders too. Yeah. That it's like that extra little, like you said, just like that extra little helping to take that edge off so that they can, all of the work you are doing can be amplified right. a little bit more. So I know women are going to ask because the, do you have CBD? Does some of it have THC in it? Versus oh, I wish. Some that doesn't <laughs> because I know they're going to ask like, you know, and there's that whole conversation of, you know, oh, it's got a little bit of THC because the legal limit is, gosh, I'm not going to know these numbers, but I know there's like, you know, you can get your, you have some that has full spectrum. 0.03. Mm-hmm. 0.03 um, has THC and then people are like, oh my gosh, is that going to make me high? <laughs> not even close. Not even close. So some of our products are um, broad spectrum, which does mean it does contain some, but it's so less than even that legal limit. Um, that it wouldn't affect you. But the, the good thing about that is, is you want as many cannabinoids as possible. You, you know, there's CBD is just one tiny molecule in the cannabis plant. There's over a hundred. So when you add in CBD, CBN, CBG, THC, even if it's just a little bit, they all work together in what's called um, the umbrella effect, the entourage effect, sorry. And it, and it, they all work together to help your body, um, produce more cannabinoids. It helps your endocannabinoid system regulate and function better. And if you're listening, you're like, well, what is that? The endocannabinoid system is like this overarching system in your body. So it affects sleep. It affects hormones. It affects anxiety. Obviously it affects reactivity. So it's kind of like this beautiful overarching system that helps you be healthier. And of course you don't need to take CBD for it to be, you know, at its optimal level, but Most people aren't doing the things that they need to be to help it get to that optimal level. So again, it's like taking a supplement, a vitamin, you know, you're not going to get enough vitamin D by being outside. Believe me, I've tried. And most of us are vitamin D deficient. So you add in a vitamin D so that you're healthy and you're, you know, better able to fight off viruses and things like that. So is there a reason, because you'll see CBD supplements out there that have the minimal 0.03 0.03 THC, and then you'll have ones that's, that don't have THC. Everything that I know, and everyone that listens knows that I'm a huge fan of talking about how everything in the body is connected. So it makes sense. You would need maybe the minuscule amount of THC to actually help upregulate like the CBD and the other ones that you listed. Am I correct in saying that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The, we have all these receptors in our body. And so THC specifically likes to fit right into those receptors, which makes you feel high. It makes you feel less pain. Um, obviously CBD doesn't do that, but when you have, when you take CBD, it does go into your body and it does connect with other, uh, elements and, and your endocannabinoid system being one of them. And so when you have THC going in and fitting into those receptors, it's like everything, like you just said, is regulated better. It's a stronger, more potent dose that you're taking, you know, you're spending your money. You, you, I would, we do have isolated uh, capsules as well, but I would recommend getting a broad spectrum, you know, with low THC levels so that you do get the most for your money and you do start feeling better quicker. Yeah. Thank you for sharing all that. I know I get a lot of questions about CBD, so I, this will help clear up a lot for everyone listening um, and how it can be so, so beneficial for so many reasons. So thank you, Liz. Uh, will you just, is there any last things that you want to share with all the women listening? 
Yeah. I mean, when you listen to conversations like this, I feel like you get motivated. You're like, yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go out there and then real life happens. So I just want to, I just want to leave this with you, you know, do one thing that, that you that you're already doing in your day. Think of one thing and then add in some element of self-care, whether it's writing down what you're grateful for, whether it's journaling, morning pages, just getting what's in your head out onto the page, whether it's just sitting quietly in your chair and just focusing on the inhalation and exhalation of your breathing. Just do one thing, add it on to something that's already in your routine. And I promise you, this all everything that we've been talking about will make sense and then you'll want to expand it. Oh, thank you, Liz. Will you share <laughs> with everyone where they can find more about you. And of course, um, I'm going to recommend everyone listening to check out your podcast as well. Yeah, absolutely. So motherhood unstressed on Instagram, motherhoodunstressed.com. It's uh, just Google it. You'll find me. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you, Erica. This is great.